invitation to, to participate and the, the possibility of giving this talk. I'm going to be telling you how to account for the certain type of contribution to the correlators of Wilson loops in n equal four super young mills. This is based on some recent work, mainly done with, uh, with Pablo Pisani and Alan Rios Fuckerman, both of them here in the audience. But moreover, with some ongoing project, which is in collaboration also with them, but with and Costia Sarembo. So, so I guess that the starting point should be like try to motivate a little bit why to consider this this, this problem. So while well, Wilson loops uh, are interesting gauge invariant observables in, in any gauge theory, because you, they, they, they come with very valuable physical information. Uh, for instance, you could, you could use them to define the quark and quark potential that uh, describes the confinement or the confinement properties of a gauge theory. Um, you can also use it to define the, this Brestralum function that calibrates the, the power radiated by accelerated charges. Or even in equal for super young mills, by considering certain life-like uh, contours, you can you can relate expectation value of Wilson loops with the gluon scattering amplitudes. So, uh, and why 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 to consider Wilson loops in equal for super young mills? Well, that maybe the, the main the main reason to consider equal for super young mills it, it is that. N equal for super young mills is a gauge theory in the prototypical example of ADS CFT. So if, if you want to learn about the correspondence, this is probably the, 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 the case which is uh, under good control to, to understand the, 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 the structures underlying the correspondence. So, and moreover, <coughs> as, as, we, as Nada was, was telling us, in the case of N equal for super young mills, you also have some Wilson loops whose expectation values and even correlators between them can be computed exactly, exactly as a function of the, the coupling constant. And this is, given the, that the ADS-CFT correspondence is a, a weak and a strong coupling duality, having exact results is crucial if you are interested in, in implementing some kind of precision test of it uh, by comparing explicit computations in one side and the other of the, of the, of the duality. So, Maybe this is my main motivation. Let me stress it. And then, <clears throat> well, when, when, when you start to look for exact results uh, concerning Wilson loops in N equal four super young mills, uh, as, as Nada was saying, there are many, many methods you could use. Maybe the, the most results were obtained using either integrability or localization methods, right? So, but today I'm gonna take a a rather simpler and maybe bolder route, but very interesting anyway, which it has to do with just an explicit resummation of some kind of particular diagrams, which are, we will call ladder diagrams. So, well, let me just sketch an outline of, of the talk. Um, well, I will start with just the definition of Wilson loops and how are they defined in N equal for super young mills, and then I will go into the details of deriving some integral Dyson equations for compute the contribution of ladder diagrams to the first to the expectation value of a single Wilson loop. Then uh, I will extend the same ideas to, to, to write down Dyson equations for the contribution of ladder diagrams uh, to the correlator of two Wilson loops. Of course, you can go on, consider uh, more, I mean, correlators with more Wilson loops, and this is part of the ongoing project I was mentioning, but I, I will not discuss them today. Um, one, one ingredient that is going to be crucial in what I'm going to be presenting today is that, as, as Nadab was saying, when, when we will see it, when you define Wilson loops in N equal four super young mills, you also specify, I mean, you also couple this external particle with some of the scalar fields of the theory, so you have to specify some orientation in the internal space. So when we consider the, the correlator of two Wilson loops, we will take the two Wilson loops with different internal space orientations, right? So we, we are gonna introduce this internal space angle gamma, and this is this gamma, it, it is this gamma that will allow us to, 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 to go to a specific 
critical cases or some parametric regime in which we can, we can extract exact results. So to be more precise, there is, we are gonna find, there is, you can find a critical angle uh, in which the correlator becomes supersymmetric. So in that case, uh, you can get exact results and moreover you can show that the solution of the Jordison equation is gonna coincide with the localization results obtained by, the results obtained by supersymmetric localization. But then, oh sorry, maybe another and maybe the, the most interesting part of, of our work is the existence of this, this other parametric limit. We will see it in detail. Some limit in which, of course, ladder diagrams is, is not the, it's not all that you have to take into account, but in this parametric limit, ladder diagrams are the leading order in some parametric limit. So they, they dominate, so if you, with some ladders, go to a strong coupling limit, and then you compare with the string theory computation, and then you, 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 you can find an agreement between the two computations, and this is our precision test I was mentioning. Yes? No, I, I, we, we don't provide any physical interpretation. It's, it's true, you, you need to, it amounts to some analytical continuation of, of, um, of, of this parameter. You need an imaginary gamma. In, in the, I mean, in the string theory, it's, it's weird because it's like, like a, an imaginary angle in the phi sphere, but from the perspective of the field theory, it's just a coupling the scalar field with an imaginary, um, Quantity or coefficient, but I, I it's yeah. You 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 might you might think of it if you want to, to in, in the string theory side you you could think of of changing the signature of, of one of the angular directions. But I mean, it, it's like a, a, a trick to access a regime in which you can trust your ladder approximation. I'm, I'm not claiming more than that. So, well, then I, I will just summarize and make some comments. So, okay, well, what is uh, the Wilson loop? The Wilson loop is just this path order exponential um, of the contour integral of the gauge potential. Uh, it measures then some non-abelian phase that acquires a, an external particle that is, is forced to move along some closed contour and essentially it depends on two things, right? It depends on whether, on how do you take the, this trajectory. And also, it depends on what type of particle you, you make, so you, you move along this, this cross contour. And this, this information is just encoded in, in the representation in which you take this trace. You can take this trace in, in different representations. Uh, and this is, is what particle is moving around. So if, if we, everything I'm gonna be telling you today, has to do with a fundamental representation, but you can consider other cases. For those who were in the, the school last week, Diego was, was talking plenty of, of, of these other cases. Uh, so if you take the fundamental representation, we were talking about quarks uh, circulating in the loop. <coughs> okay, well, but then how the, the physical interpretation of the expectation value of Wilson loop is typically depends on what contour do you take. So if you, Typical examples are if you take a very elongated rectangle, you can, the expectation value, you can use it to define the quark and the quark potential. Or you can take, sorry, this uh, cusp in the trajectory. This can allow you to, to define the, the cusp anomalous dimension. But if you consider like a wavy line, I mean, a, a, a trajectory which is slightly deviating for the straight line, you can de define the, the restraining function that, that now that was, was, was telling us about. There are many in, interesting contours, but today I, I'm gonna focus mainly on circular Wilson loops. And the, the, the reason to focus in on this kind of circular Wilson loops is that for them you can get some exact results in order to implement some precision tests. So, <clears throat> well, in n equal four super young means the kind the, the, is a little bit more than that because you, you have a, other fields in the action representation apart from the gauge potential. In particular, you have six real scalar fields. So in principle, you can define an ex a Wilson loop who's in which the external particle also couples to the scalar fields. And then if you do that, you have to specify how do they couple. So you have this additional uh, 
if you want contouring the internal space, which is the capping with the scalar fields, it is controlled by this uh, R6 unit vector. Um, okay, but then uh, what would you like to do is to, 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 to try to compute this, this expectation value of such Wilson loops in n equal four superior mills. Well, the, the reason to, to include in this, I mean, of course, you can even in n equal four superior mills, you can consider the, the standard Wilson loops, but this is just a, a matter of convenience. If you include these scalars, this, this capping with the scalar fields, you have a locally supersymmetric Wilson loops, and this is the key, I mean, this is the, the reason why. Um, you, 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 you can produce some exact results at the end of the day. So anyway, you would like to, to compute expectation value of these objects in n equal force to p young mills. And this is going to be, in general, a non-trivial function of the, of the tooth capping, say, and also a non-trivial function of the, of the rank of the gauge group, no, but we will mainly work in the planar limit today. Okay, what can you do? Well, as, as usual, if this coupling constant were small, let's say much more than one, you can just make a perturbative series expansion of, of it, and you can compute it. This is sketchily depicted by, by the contour with these uh, Feynman diagrams accounting for different contribution of different orders. You can do that, but certainly this is on, only going to be valid in this, in this regime. But sometimes you could be in, a, in an opposite regime in which the, the, the tooth coupling or the co your coupling constant is very large. And then you can, this, this perturbative approximation typically breaks down. So, but in those cases, what you can do is to appeal to go and, and apply, I use your ADSFT dictionary. So, what is the, 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 the dual picture of, of a Wilson loop? Well, we also heard about this last week. Typically, in, in, in ADSFT, it's a reformulation of your, your field theory in terms of a, some gravity theory in ADS in which the field theory input enters as a boundary condition for your, your gravity theory, right? In the case of Wilson loops, the, the precise uh, prescription was given by Maldacena and, and Ray and Yi already in the early days in 98, and they claim that the expectation value of a Wilson loop in a fundamental representation is accounted by the partition function of a string uh, whose open string, whose endpoints end at the boundary of ideas on the contour that specifies the Wilson loop. Right? So if you want to compute now in, in the dual language the expectation value of the Wilson loop, you have to path integrate your string theory over all possible worship configurations subject to this boundary condition. Yes? Typically, this is, of course, going to be very difficult. But what you can do is, as usual, try to study this in some semi-classical approximation, yes? And then what is the semi-classical appro approximation is when, when this path integral is, is, is dominated by just the, min the configuration that minimizes this, this action, and this is like minimizing the area of, of, of the worksheet that ends on this contour. But okay, well, this is in general not justified, but it, it is, so this semi-classical approximation it's going to be a good approximation as long as you have a, a coefficient in front of the, the string action that, that becomes very large. So what, what coefficient you, do you have in front of the string action? Well, you, also, you always have a one over alpha prime. But also, since you are now formulating your string or Polyakov or Namugoto action in, in, in ADS, you are going to pull out a factor of R squared, where R is the radius of your ADS space time. So the, the effective tension of the string is R squared over alpha prime. And this is, if you go to the ads -CFT dictionary, the square root of your tooth coupling. Just define as, as the young mean square times the rank of the gauge group. So then for this semi-classical approximation to be valid, you need this effective tension to be very large. And then this is the, the strongly coupling regime from the field theory point of view. So, of course, you can go beyond this semi-classical approximation, and this would amount to consider quantum fluctuations of the worksheet. I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to be discussing this, but if you're interested in this kind of corrections, there is a talk in the afternoon by Guillermo Silva talking about this. So, <clears throat> but as I said, my motivation was to implement some precision test, but this is in general challenging because what I just said, results typically are valid in opposite regimes. Then is when I, we, we, you, you can go to consider ladder diagrams. Ladder diagrams are, the, their definition is 
So they are Feynman diagrams with no in, in, internal, with no interaction vertices, right? It's only propagators you, you consider. Of course, this is a lot simpler than the most general case. Um, and in many cases, this is a tractable problem, and you can even resumate it. But the, 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 the caveat is that, in general, this accounts only partially for the expectation value of a Wilson loop. But, as I said, there are going to be some specific cases in which the correlator, for instance, or the Wilson loop becomes supersymmetric, and in those cases, the ladder diagrams are the only contribution you get. All interaction diagrams cancel, so the ladder uh, diagrams are the exact uh, answer for the expectation value of the Wilson loops. And also, there is, uh, when we go to correlators and we, we play this parametric limit, there are going to be some regime in which, although ladder diagrams are not the only things you get, they are going to be the leading order in some parametric expansion. So, in these two cases, you, you can resummate or compute exact resummations of ladders, go to a strong coupling limit, and make a comparison with some string theory computation, and you, 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 you could observe that the two results actually agree. So, yeah. So, well, this is, I, I hope this is clear, the, the idea of, of what I'm going to be telling you. Now I'm going to go to, it's going to be much more detailed, so if there are questions about what I said so far, or, or what is the motivation, or the idea of, 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 of the computation, please, this is a good moment to, to ask. Okay. So let, let us jump into the details. <clears throat> let, me, let me define this, this non-abelian phase factor I, I, I called U. It's closely related to the, the, to the Wilson loop, but now it's, an, it's, it's an, in an open trajectory, an, op or an arc of, of, of some trajectory between two points, it's, but it's a, a still the, the path order exponential of this combination of the gauge field. I'm gonna take, I always take in this now the coupling with the scalar fields to be a constant along the along the trajectory and just take it to be in some particular direction. So, generically this combination, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call it the, this operator O. And we would like to compute the expectation value of the trace of this non-abelian phase. As, as I said, this is it's gonna be directly giving you the expectation value of a Wilson loop if you now if you take T1 and T2 such that the two endpoints of the curve are the same, so you are in a closed curve, this is gauge invariant, and this, this is going to be the, the expectation value of the Wilson loop. But in general, is this other non-abelian phase U, whose the expectation value of, of its trace is, is what we call W. So, okay, and then I would like to compute, and I'm not going to be computing exactly this, but only the ladders diagrams contribution to this expectation value. So what you have to do is just to, now you have this exponential, you have to expand it, the series, the Taylor expansion of the exponential, and start to contract with propagators. I'm never including any uh, interaction uh, diagrams. So, well, when you do that, you, you, of course, now you have to take into account the propagators between scalar fields and gluons or gauge fields. And as Nadav said, you can combine them in an effective propagator. So I think Nadam was calling it I, I am calling it G but it's essentially the same, the same object is, so the propagator between two of these operators O, between T and T prime along the curve, is just an effective propagator G, which typically depends on what, what is the, the function X of T parameterizing this, this trajectory. <coughs> so I'm, I'm using this double line attention to, to, to emphasize this, the two indices of, of, this, of these operators O. <coughs> well, let me just try to, to do a, a re-derivation of, of the, 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 answer, the result that Nadab presented that was the expectation value of a circular Wilson loop was given by this Bessel function. So this can be uh, re-obtained with using, using these uh, internal equations for, for the expectation value of this abelian phase, non-abelian phase U. So the, the, the central thing is that this non-abelian phase factor satisfies some recursion relation. So the U between T1 and T2 is the identity plus this integral 
of u between t1 and some t that you integrate between t1 and t2 of this insertion O. So what are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna just take the trace, compute the expectation value, and, and start, to doing, start doing weak contractions. So for instance, if you take the trace of this recursion identity, here you get just n, here is, is the expectation value of the trace, but if, since you would like to weak contract this O in T prime with some other O within U, you have to split this U as a U between zero and T, T second, and an O in T second, and then another U between T second and T prime, and then you contract these two O's, then you get this effective propagator, and you get this, and if you carefully follow the, the contraction of color indices, you get that the expectation value, you get expectation value of the trace of one U and the trace of the other. Now, since we are interested in the large end limit, you can, you can argue that in the large end limit there is a factorization of this expectation value of two traces. It's just the product of the expectation values of each of the traces independently. So, but then this is again, this is what we already call W up to this uh, normalization, but this is a W of T second and this is a W of T prime minus T second. So, what, what we have obtained is that this W, the expectation value of this non-abelian phase, has to satisfy this uh, integral equation. So still this is, in general, difficult to solve because of, mainly because of this effective uh, propagator here. So let me just, because in, in the following examples, I'm not gonna go through the details, but you can get a sketchy the, the diagrammatic interpretation of this, and you could have a uh, guess that this integral equation comes out. If you, let me just schematically represent this expectation value of the non-abelian phase W by this blue blob, so the, which accounts all possible ways of contracting uh, propagators planarly in this segment between zero and T. So this is what you, we would like to compute. So these diagrams are maybe a little bit confused. This is an open arc, and this, this uh, dashed line is just representing that the closure of the color index, but it's not a, it's, it's, it's an open arc if you want. But okay, so you, you, you would like to compute this. It could be that there is no uh, propagator all along the line, or if there is at least one, uh, you can call T prime the rightmost point in the segment that is contracted with the propagator. So if this is T prime, so to the right of it, there could be no propagators at all, so you cannot insert nothing here. And then you can call T second uh, the other point that connects T prime with the propagator with, with, with another point, it's gonna be to the left if T prime was the rightmost. And then you, you have this double line, <clears throat> and then you can have propagators that start and end either in this segment or in this other segment, but certainly you cannot connect them because if you have a propagator that starts here and ends here, you will be crossing this blue line and that would be non-planar. So this is suppressed, this kind of diagrams would be suppressed in the planar limit. So the only thing you can have is propagators within this interval, and this is uh, this W of t minus the second, and you can also have propagators that start and then in the, same, in the segment between zero and T second, and this is W of T second. And of course, because of the, of this, uh, the blue double line, you have this, this effective propagator. So you can, if you see, you can derive this kind of integral equation just yet by, by, by looking pictures in this way. So, but as I said, this is in general very difficult, but if, when you go to the case of the circular Wilson loop, there is some, some magic and some simplifications due to that in the case of when you take this, uh, the, para, the York Trevor to be a circle, this effective propagator between O and T and T prime becomes just constant, right? And this is constant. So when you go to this integral equation, this now the integral equation looks a lot simpler. And then if you make just by simply making here, in this case is the, the key or the, the, the method to, to solve this, this integral is the Laplace transform. If you do the Laplace transform of the integral equation, what you get is just an algebraic, an algebraic equation, which turns out to be a quadratic algebraic equation for the transformation of W of T. So it is what we, I call W of Z. But yeah, it's very simple to solve this quadratic equation, and then you, you, you have an explicit expression for the Laplace transform 
of the function you would like to compute. Then you only have to do is to anti-transform back, and then you get, if you anti-transform this, W of t is precisely this, this Bessel function, this, this, this first, this Bessel function I1. As I said, if you would like to connect this with a circular Wilson loop, now you, you have to take t such that the, the initial and the end point of this uh, non-abelian phase is the same, and then you, you, for the case of the circle, this is when you evaluate it w and 2 pi. Now if you evaluate this w function in 2 pi, you get precisely this um, Bessel function that Nadab showed to us earlier. So, good, good. So l let me try to extend these ideas for the case what I, what I said I was going to compute is the connected correlator uh, of two circular Wilson loops. So, <clears throat> so the connected correlator is the, the, the correlator minus the, the product of the individual expectation values. And I'm going to be considering two concentric circular Wilson loops, like the here, the, the pitted here, separated by a distance h in some uh, transverse direction. And you can even consider them to be of different radii, they don't have to be the same. But uh, another thing that I'm going to introduce, which is going to be crucial for our uh, computation, is that, as I said, the Wilson loops is, is, is coupling with the scalar fields through this unit vector, this R6 unit vector. And I, I'm going to take the coupling in the two loops to be in, the, in a different direction. So let's say that we, we, we call that the, the first one is coupling in this direction, the second one is coupling in, in a different point in the, in the internal phi sphere forming an angle gamma with, the, with the, the, the first one in the North Pole. So, and this gamma parameterized this difference in internal space orientation, and it is that what is going to allow us to, to play all this, I mean, this, this parametric, parametric limit. So, okay, this, the, this ties on equations for the connected correlators in the case of gamma zero has already been considered in the early days of ADS-EFT by Sarembo. But as I said, we, now we are going to turn on this internal space separation. This is going to give you two things to, to benefit from this. It is possible to find a critical value of gamma such that uh, this, this uh, correlator becomes supersymmetric and can be exactly computed for that particular critical case. And we can also, by taking this cos gamma very, very large, you can implement this, this ladder limit in which you, you, you capture the full expectation value with just considering other diagrams. Okay, but now, uh, still we are only considering ladder diagrams, so we, we, but now we have two different sort of, of effective propagators because say now we have these two loops, we can have a propagators that connect two points on the same circle, either the first one or the second, but it, since they are circles, these uh, effective propagators, which I call rainbows here and depicted with blue, are going to be just constant as before, right? Those are going to be the easy ones. But then you also have the possibility of having a, a propagator that connect one point in the lower circle with, one, with another point in the upper circle. And these are the ones I'm going to be calling ladders. And of course, for them, in, in general, you have this uh, non-trivial function of, of the difference between T and T prime. Um, and now we would like to compute this, this, the connected correlator of these two Wilson loops. The, 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 the quantity was closely related to that. It is the, the analog of what I defined W in the previous slide is this K of T, which <coughs> loosely you could call it the green function, which is expectation value of two traces uh, of two abelian, two abelian phases. One is the, the, the complete uh, contour. So one, one is, is, is complete, and the other one is just an arc. But then you take the trace and you, you, you close it. Then the, the, the connected correlator you want is, is going to be when you take this t parameter equal to 2 pi, such that the, the two of the are, are closed, and this is going to be the corrected, connected correlator. But then as you go, you, you, need that, you will see that you also need to define this other green function, which is looking similar, but, but the difference, the main difference is that in this case, the, the two uh, non-abelian phase factors are within the same 
single trace, right? And moreover, then in this case, no one of them is, is, is complete, so this has an extension T, this has an extension S, and five is like a relative separation between the starting point of this one and the starting point of the other one. Okay, let's see if we can derive some Dyson equation for these guys and eventually compute the, the ladder contribution to the connected correlator. To do that, I'm not gonna do it in detail, I just appeal to the schematic way of thinking. So now, I, I was repre graphically representing this green function K by a yellow blob, and this other gamma green function by a purple blob. So, so this is, a, what we would like to compute. So at least since this is connected, there, there's gonna be at, at least one point that is connected with, with, with some propagator going upstairs. So there is gonna be certainly at least one point in this segment zero and T with the propagator. So let's call T prime the rightmost point in this segment that is contracted with one of those affected propagators. So this is T prime. So now th th you have two possibilities. This is contracted with a rainbow propagator that connects with another point in the same segment, or a ladder propagator with, that connects T prime with a, with a point in the, in, the, in the upper circle. So <clears throat> when, it, when it is contracted with the, with the T prime within the same segment, you have also two different in principle ways of doing it, because you can contract it like this, or in this other way. Um, again, since T prime is the rightmost, you cannot have, you have no propagators ending on this between T prime and T, but you can have propagators in this segment and in this other segment. You cannot cross this double line, the blue double line, otherwise it could be non-planar. So for instance here, the propagators that end in points between T second and T prime, they could only be uh, this blue bubble, the blue, blue blob that gives you a, a W of T minus T prime. And then what you have here is just the same structure as here, but now instead of being between zero and T, it is just between zero and T prime, and then you have like the, 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 the traces for in, in each of them. So this is like uh, the, the integral with, of W of T minus T prime with, with K of T second. And of course you have to integrate for all possible values of T prime and T second such that T second is to the left of T prime. This one looks a little bit different, but if you change coordinate, you can show that these two guys are exactly the same. And that's why you have a, a, a factor of two here. And this is, if you want the first term, is the, the, the contribution of these two possibilities. The, third, the second term is just the possibility of this rightmost point in the, in the interval zero t connected with the ladder propagator with, with the point bar five in the, in the interval zero to pi. But now, if you see, now you follow the lines, you realize, then you, 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 you can have all possible ways of throwing propagators here and there. But now, if you, if you follow the line, you see that they are within a single trace. And that's why this is now a, a, how can I say, a, a green function gamma, this auxiliary gamma function. And then, Whenever in the case when we connect it with the blue line, we just get a, a factor of g. Uh, here I don't have the definition of g. g is this lambda, I missed it. So I'm calling g this, this combination. Oh. G is just this combination. So whenever you have a blue, a blue rainbow, you, you have g, and whenever you have a, a green a ladder, you have this effective uh, propagator g large G. So, but then you see this is like, a not, no, it's not a closed integral equation because it relates K with an integral of K, but then you have this integral that involves gamma. So you need like a, to derive like an integral equation for gamma and you can do it in the same way. So you start with the object you would like to compute and then think of all possible ways of contracting propagators within this uh, single trace and it could be well, maybe there is no propagator connecting the lower with the upper uh, interval or arc. And in that case, if there is no propagators going from downstairs to upstairs, the only thing you could have is a blob, a blue blob, 
downstairs and a blue blob upstairs, so this is just this term W of T, W of S. But then, if, if, <coughs> if there are gonna be um, uh, ladders, let's call T prime the rightmost, so the, the, you're gonna get a T prime that connects, a, a ladder diagram that connects T prime with some phi plus S prime point in the, upper, in the upper segment, but since this is the rightmost to the right, you can have propagators, but no one could be ladders. So here you have a blue blob, and you are gonna get a, another blue blob there. And then what you get here is essentially the same structure, but just with restricted, restricted intervals. And then you have to, of course, move T prime over all possible values between zero and T, and S prime between all possible values between zero and S. So, this is the first term, and here you, you get a, this, these are the blue blobs, W of T minus T prime, W of S minus S prime. You got the, the effective uh, propagator from this green line, and then you got essentially the same guy, but evaluated in T prime and S prime. And this is a close integral equation, because now these are unknown, those are those special functions, the only unknown is just gamma. So if you manage to solve this, so this was the first step of your procedure. You first have to solve for gamma. Once you solve for gamma, you could go to the integral equation of, of k, and then try to solve for k, and finally, evaluate it in 2 pi, and you're gonna get the ladder contribution to the connected correlator of two loops. Um, as, as you can imagine, doing this in the general case could be still very tricky and very difficult. So let me discuss, so not the general case, but some specific cases. The, the first specific case is this critical value I was mentioning. So there is, if you define this cos beta, cos beta, in terms of these geometrical parameters of the, of the loops, you see that the effective propagators is written in this way. And it is obvious that if you take cos gamma equal to minus cos of beta, this becomes just constant, and it's the same constant as before up to a sign. So this is again a, a major simplification for your Dyson equation, for, for gamma, for instance. Now you do the same. You Laplace transform the integral equation for gamma. You do Laplace transform for, for both variables s and t, and then you get an algebraic equation for the Laplace transform, the double Laplace transform of this auxiliary green function gamma. That is, those are the Laplace transforms of the Bessel functions, so those, those are known. So you just have to anti-transform this, looks complicated, but at the end of the day, when you do this Laplace transformation, anti-transformation, you get that this auxiliary gamma in this critical case is just the same Bessel function, but evaluated in T minus S. So then, then, as I said, you have to go to the integral equation for K, solve it, and finally evaluate it in 2 pi, you do it, and then you get some this, this quadratic expression in Bessel functions, right? So this is the exact resummation of ladder, of ladder diagrams in this critical case. Still, you may be worried that this is not taking into account interaction diagrams, but you can claim that interaction diagrams also for the, the connected corrector cancel. And the, the, just to justify this, you can show that this precise critical value of, of this internal space separation is, is the one that makes the correlator supersymmetric. What I mean, so when you have two Wilson loops, circular Wilson loops with different orientations, they are half VPS each one, but they preserve different set of supersymmetries in general. But if you take this critical angle that relates the internal space separation with the spatial separation, space-time separation, it becomes supersymmetric. So you can use the, the, the common supersymmetry to localize, and this was done uh, already uh, pointed out by Pestum, and it was worked in detail in this other work by John B. Pestum and Ritchie for the connected correlator. And essentially, you, you, lo you localize to the same matrix model that we, that Diego Trancanelli was telling us last week in the school, which is simply a Gaussian matrix model. Um, and then, if you would like to compute the, the connected correlator, now you have to compute the expectation value of this matrix model of two insertions of two traces of this exponential of this, this matrix of the matrix model. And if, if you do that, you get, of course, the exact uh, expression 
that is quadratic on the Bessel functions. Okay. Um, and of course, this is indicating that uh, interaction diagrams cancel. So, but let, let, as I said, maybe the most interesting thing was to go into this ladder limit. What is the ladder limit? Well, it is, it is the generalization of an idea that we implemented for the CASP uh, Wilson line, but it's essentially the same. So you could define a limit in which cos of, cos, uh, of gamma goes to infinity and the coupling goes to zero such that lambda hat, which is the product of the two, is, is fixed. So for instance, consider the two loop contributions. You have three possible kind of contributions. You, you could have two ladders, a ladder and a rainbow, or some interaction diagram. So this one comes with two cos gamma, so it's lambda hat square. But this one cos, comes with lambda square, but only one cos of gamma. So it's lambda hat over cos gamma. So if, the same with the interaction diagram. So if cos gamma is a very large number, these two diagrams are suppressed in comparison with this one. Right? So the conclusion is that if you're in this ladder limit, you can dismiss not only diagrams with vertices, but also any diagram containing some rainbow. So it's not only that you consider propagators, but you consider only propagators that connect the two loops. So it means in our integral equation that whenever we, we wrote W, we, that should be replaced by one, because now rainbows are also uh, subleading. So then the integral equation, for instance, for the auxiliary function gamma is very simple. It's, it's simpler. So you don't have gamma here, not, not in the interior, not in the in, inside the integrals. And then you can just get translate the integral equation into a differential equation by taking partial derivative with respect of s and t. And because now you have that this uh, g function depends only on the difference, you introduce this change of coordinates, you make this ansatz. And for this function gamma of, of x, you get like a Schrodinger equation, where the potential is minus this g function that was given by the defective potential, the, the defective propagator. So, of course, solving this in the general case could be difficult. This is a periodic potential. Uh, but since we are interested in making a precision test, we would like to study this not exactly as a function of lambda, but it could be nice, but we are at least interested in the strong coupling limit of this. And when you take the strong coupling limit of this, since you have a gamma in this, in this G effective propagator, it's like a, having a very deep well. So this is just dominated by the semi-classic, by the classical approximation in which uh, the, the, the particle is going to be localized at the minimum of the potential, and, and, and the eigenvalue is going to be just the, the, the height of the potential. So you, you have this gamma is just this exponential of the, the height of the potential, and then you have like a, a periodic delta, delta function, and then when you have this approximate solution for this auxiliary gamma, you go to the equation for k, solve it, evaluate it in, in 2 pi, and then you get uh, that the connected correlator, or at least the ladder, the ladder contribution, the strong coupling limit, is this exponential of the square root of gamma, and something you would have expected, the square root of cos gamma, and this is square root of this combination of the geometrical parameters. So I'm not gonna, I don't have time to go through the details, but you, of course you can try to analyze the same thing by doing the semi-classical string theory computation. Now you have to compute a, like a wall sheet that connects uh, two circles that are separated along this distance x, but since you also have this, this separation in internal space, you have to include this motion in this um, internal angle. Okay, you make an answer, you, you impose proper boundary conditions, and then you realize that there are two constants of motion that essentially relate to the two geometrical parameters, h and gamma, and everything is related through some elliptic functions. Um, I don't have time to discuss this, but let me just go directly to the, to the ladder limit. You realize that now if you take one of these uh, constants of motion is going to be very large, then you, the, 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 the relation is simplified, and then you got this cos gamma is at one minus s. S has to be taken in this interval. If you now look at the regularized action, that was also an elliptic function, becomes simply this. So now if you use this relation to write the square root of t, you get this. And then if you look at what is the relation between s and the geometrical parameters in this uh, large t limit, you, you get this relation. And then when you plug this inside this expression, you get exactly, exactly the same 
uh, result that we, we got for the, the strong coupling limit of the ladder resummation. So let me just then go to the, the summary of what I, I said. So uh, the, main, the, the main thing is that, I mean, for me, the, what the thing that I learned is that the resummation of ladder diagrams can be always studied through some Dyson equations, some integral Dyson equations, which are in general difficult to solve, but in our case, there was this critical case in which uh, the, the resummation of ladders could be computed, can be computed exactly. This case was, you can show that it is super, symmet super symmetric, and then moreover, you, you see that the ladders resummations, of course, coincides with the, with the it, it's the full answer, and it coincides with the, the result you obtain with the matrix model. And then maybe the, mo the most interesting thing is that this, the existence of this parametric limit in which, although ladder diagrams in this regime is not the, 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 the full answer, it's the, the leading order answer. And then you, you can go to the strong coupling limit and make an explicit, a successful explicit comparison with, with the, the minimal area of the dual string. So this is a precision test, and let me emphasize that it is a precision test in a non-supersymmetric case. I made it for the, the circular Wilson loop, but it's quite likely that these ideas can be extended for any arbitrary Wilson loop. So that's, in the sense, is, 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 is a very general kind of, of, of precision test. Um, but okay, that was all what I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention.